What is going on in my Houston Texans family? Before we get into this video, we are almost to 5,000 subscribers. And once we get there, I will be giving away the signed Houston Texans helmet. So if you're new to the channel, feel free to like, feel free to comment. And I'll be choosing one of you guys to give this helmet away to. I am very encouraged by this Houston Texans defense, even though the fourth quarter and overtime was just, was just absolutely abysmal by the whole team. It wasn't just the defense. The offense fell apart. Our coaching staff fell apart. It was just a bad sequence of football for the Houston Texans. But through quarters one through three, I was very encouraged by it, right? And it starts with the pass rush, which I think was okay. And it was led by surprise veteran uh, Jerry Hughes. Two sacks, the interception. He caused the false start, which kicks the Indianapolis Colts out of field goal range right before, you know, the uh, halftime. That was very encouraging from a late signing from general manager Nick Casario. We knew that Jerry Hughes was going to be a leader on this team. We didn't know that he was going to be a captain, but here he is. And in his first game as a Houston Texan, just absolutely balls out, turning back the clock. Like I said, two sacks, one interception. How many more games like this does he have? This was one of the best games he's ever played. Jonathan Grenard, I think, had an okay game, right? His one highlight was the uh, Nahil Himes tackle for a loss and the goal line stance, which, you know, was a turnover on downs, a huge play for this Houston Texans defense. That's why I was excited by this unit as a whole because that wasn't their only, you know, goal line stance. They had another one later on in the game where, the secondary just absolutely bought out, but back to the you know to the interior offensive line, I think it was very good. We saw Malik Collins, who had a fan, who I think had a very good start to his season. He had that huge tackle for loss on Jonathan Taylor, and like I think it was the first quarter, and was just moving bodies. Roy Lopez, man, is just fantastic. I think he's just gonna blossom into something special for this Houston Texans team. Had a very solid day. Was you know putting some pressure. On you know on Quentin Nelson on the center, I was excited. Am excited for the future of Roy Lopez. And then we saw rookie Kurt Heinrich get you know thrown in there, and he did a lot of good things. I right? was very you know good against the run. Wasn't really being blown back and overtaken by these veteran offensive line uh, by the Colts because the Colts have a very good old line. So was excited and very encouraged by this front seven. It didn't have no Mario Addison. It didn't have no uh, Rasheem Green. I know that from head coach Lovey Smith. He wants to keep a rotation of pass rushers, keep these guys fresh, and put consistent pressure on the QB. Um, today, Rasheem Green was practicing, and then hopefully Mario Addison comes pretty soon. But I liked what I got. I mean, sorry, I liked what I saw from the front four. The linebackers, I think, were very good and very bad. The only good thing I think that they were good at is just tackling, right? They were wrapping up. They weren't missing a lot of things. When Jonathan Taylor took over, you know, these guys had their hands felt, you know, uh, you know, full and filthy. Kramer Gruger Hill, he had a very the stash is going to say he had a good game, right? He said he's going to have 15 plus tackles, but he was also targeted 15 times by this Indianapolis Colts uh, offense. And as you know, in this day and age, in this league, running backs can run routes. They are actual weapons, not only on the ground, but through the air. This linebacking core has an issue at the moment, and it's something that might be exposed as the season goes on. We need guys like Garrett Wallow and Christian Harris to get fully healthy and come back and play. I do like Christian Kirksey. I do like Gruger Hill. But it's just the fact that these guys, they're just not good in coverage anymore. And you need that to be a successful defense. You need your linebackers to, you know, to fill in the lanes and, you know, give this secondary some help because it just wasn't there. And it saw once the Indianapolis Colts realized that they could just throw out these linebackers at will, they were taking advantage of it and just kept on doing it. It led to the comeback. We need to see the young guys. Garrett Wallow. Christian Harris, when he gets back healthy, we need to see Neville Hewitt out there. Because honestly, I was very excited for this linebacking core, and now not so much. The secondary, I think, was the bright spot of the day. Because it hasn't been the bright spot for many years for this Houston Texans team. Your number three overall pick, Darius Stingley, I think, had a very solid and very promising day. Yes, he did get, did get beat a couple of times, but that was when he was in zone. When he was man-to-man, -man, the dude was with his man, locked down, hip for hip, stride for stride. There was that big, that big pass breakup on Alex Pierce uh, you know, at the goal line. He also got beat by Alex Pierce, and Alex Pierce dropped the ball. 
but Derek Stingley, just the fact that he's healthy, two years in removed from football and played pretty damn good. I am excited for him. His other partner in crime, Steven Nelson, had a solid day, was tested deep multiple times, batted the ball away. He said, uh, he, uh, he told Sports Radio 6 and that he think he played great. Excited for this secondary as a whole. The two safeties had a very good day. Justin Petrie had 10 plus tackles, almost had the game still an interception, but you know, it's his first game. I can't ask for much. People are also, you know, raving about his missed tackles. I think he had four. But the dude was just absolutely everywhere in week one and just going to expect that for the rest of his rookie campaign. And Jonathan Owens had that big pass breakup in the end zone, knocked it out of Mo Alley's cock's hand. This secondary was the bright spot of this Houston Texans defense. And as a whole, I am excited for this unit, and I think you guys should be too. Let me know what you think about the secondary, about this linebacking core, about the pass rush, and this defense as a whole. As always, go Texans. You guys have a very blessed day.